All right, guys. In the previous video, we covered uh, edge loops. Now we'll cover uh, a more newer method, which is just to kind of crease the edges. And once again, guys, in this series, I'm trying to be more neutral with the programs. You can do this in all good polygon modeling programs. It's just in this video, I'm showing you how to do it with 3ds Max. Um, so what you would do is you would just go ahead and select the edges you want to be creased. So you go ahead and select this. You go ahead, for example, in 3ds Max, there are several ways to do this as there are on other programs. You could also crease it right here and apply Open Subdiv instead of Turbo Smooth. You could also use a modifier called Crease Set. Click right here to select this and then go ahead and create a set. And that would also crease as well. And the benefit of this is because I can always go in here and instead of having to always adjust the loops, I can simply increase the crease value right here and then get a sharper result. And I'll also need to increase the number of subdivisions here. All right, guys. So if we look at the object I had previously, which was this object right here, instead of to deal with support loops, all I have to do is apply crease set Select this right here, create a set, give it an appropriate value, and then open subdiv. And as you can see, it's a much faster, cleaner workflow. However, depending on your needs and depending on who you work for, you may still have to go with the traditional edge loop method, depending on your clients, your customers, things like that. That's why I think it's still good to know how to do support loops as well to add to your repertoire. So it's good to be flexible. Another reason that I think it's good to still be able to use support loops is because in many situations they actually facilitate a certain kind of workflow, which I like to call the, uh, the kind of free, free flow workflow. So a lot of times, the way I like to model guys, I like to just go in here and just kind of uh, move things around here in a very kind of freestyle way. If you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to check out the description where I have links to a more advanced courses such as on sci-fi design, futuristic vehicles, furniture, and more comprehensive advanced courses. And so I'll pop in a Turbo Smooth. I like to use support loops here because they allow me a very nice way of quickly kind of modulating sharpness and smoothness. So for example, I can move this closer to make this sharper or further away to make it more smooth. And this just facilitates a very fun workflow for creating those kinds of freeform shapes that I like. For example, I can go from sharp to more and more smooth right here and i can just get a, a wide variety of fun shapes using this method so even though using creases is more convenient in many situations i think it's still a good idea to learn how to do uh, support loops as well
All right, guys, so I like this kind of workflow right here. We can create uh, very fun shapes. And, you know, this is very useful for certain types of um, certain types of objects, like, for example, vehicles and freeform objects like that, abstract objects, architectural objects. Or having the ability to, to control support loops, I think, is also an easy way to, to do this as opposed to uh, creases. So I still think that support loops are very... Uh, viable way to model as well. So, now you know both the you know, the benefits and workflow of using support loops as well as creases, and you can use this in a variety of polygon modeling programs. Thank you for watching, and take care.